Hello and welcome to my studio. I'm Kat and you're at Kat's studio. I just wanted to share with you a quick uh, tutorial on how to make this um, folio. It's got lots and lots of pages. It's the pages folio. The pages and pages folio. So what we're using today is the Winter Market Cartabella cardstock. It's very uh, nice and firm. It's, it's pretty thick cardstock. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it if you ever try it or if you already have. I know you like it. And we're going to need some. I'm using 80 pound cardstock today because, and you need four sheets of that. And we're using. I bought this from Amazon Desktop Publishing Supplies. You could very well use anything you have on hand that's a sturdy uh, cardstock. Re Recollections makes a 110 pound, which is a bit uh, thicker of a cardstock than this is. But for the, our purposes today, I think this will work out well because that, like I said, that Cartabella cardstock is pretty heavyweight. Um, okay, so let's start scoring, and I already did this piece for you. Two inches, eight inches, and eight and a half. Pretty simple. Our next sheet, same measurements. Two inches, eight inches, and an eight and a half. All right, so the next sheet. We take and score it five and a half. And the last sheet at five and a half as well. And now what we want to do is take our base um, pieces there. These are pages. The other two were pages. So how we fold and crease is we take the bubble side on the back and we fold towards that and then we crease it. And let me show you a little trick that I do usually when I'm folding uh, two lines that are close together. Let's see if it works. I'll take, let's fold that last crease and then crease it, make sure you're even. And take your score line and just kind of give it a little fold here and this one a little fold. And then go ahead and press the first one down all the way, hold it straight and crease it. Same with the other one. Hold it straight on both ends and increase that. Okay, now we're almost finished. We're gonna glue this together and then we'll put, use our ruler, put a line in. Yep. We'll fold and crease our pages as well. Now we're ready to start gluing. And now how we do this is the center is your um, is your spine on the left side. So if you really need to um, remember this, you can put an L over here for left. And the other, um, and they both go the same exact way. So you're gonna lay this out this way with the skinny part over here and the spine in the center. And the same, we're gonna lay this one out the same way. And so this is the right side. All right, so let's go ahead and usually I would mark that when I'm scoring it in the, in the scoreboard, I would 
mark left and right so when you glue it, you don't glue it wrong. So how we glue this together is this stays folded up, gets glued to that first score line you come to going towards your left. So let's put some glue, or does it? Yes, it does, wow. I've only done this one one time, so bear with me. And let's not get any glue on that score line. I'm gonna take a scrap piece of paper underneath, keep my desk clean, <laughs> and lay that in to the score line. I'm having a little shadow trouble here today. Well, hopefully that's helping. And let's lay that in. Whoops. No glue. Sorry, guys. Boo boo. All right, let's lay that in to the score line, even up the top and bottom. I have to stand it sometimes and just give it a and make sure you can get a 90 degree here when you, when you fold it up, that you didn't get in the score line. All right, open that little flap up and turn it over. Give it a good press. All right, there you have your folio so far. Take your pages now. We're gonna put these in after we put our little uh, pencil line in. So we're gonna take a pencil. And I'm just gonna draw this one in for you, but normally I wouldn't do that. Um, and draw that score line in so you can see it. And then go ahead and Put my ruler an eighth of an inch out, which is that, that little line right here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me show you. Oh, I'm glaring with my light. It's this little line, well, right here. And just line that up all the way down with the score line. And then if you even up the bottom edge, let's see if you can see this edge here with one with your line, with your inch line or so, and then just put a line here. That should be an eighth of an inch or very close. All right, because my pencil line is a little bit off. So again, lay this in at your score line Line it up across the bottom. And I'll, and I'll tell you why we're doing this. We don't have to put this line in if you're good at eyeing exactly where, you know, that should lay. But if you put these pages in and you glue them in all the way to the score line, what ends up happening is when you turn this page, it kind of gets in the way of in the score line area. So I like to pull it out a bit from that uh, score line, an eighth of an inch or, or maybe less even. So that's my idea so that when we close the pages, um, they don't get hung up. All right, so let's glue that tab area, I'll call it a tab, but it's a pretty big flap, up to the pencil line that you just made. Or if you're eyeballing it, go ahead and do that. Um, if you're eyeballing it, I would put something straight across the bottom. Lay this in to your, where you think it goes. And just make sure you're straight across here before you do any pressing. So that was pretty pretty darn straight there. 
So turn it over and press. And I forgot to put my paper under there. All right, let's do the other one. And this is the piece, obviously the piece that you bolted at five and a half inches. So we're gonna do this one. Let's see which way did we put that one in. So if you lay this book out, your page is open to the left, to the right. So we need to glue this page in this way with your fold up so that when it goes this way, they will look the same as the other book. <clears throat> okay, so let's put some glue down on this flap as well. If you wanted to make this a pocket here, you could do that. You would just glue three sides. All right, let's get our ruler in there again. Or you could put this in your, uh, I guess you could put it in your uh, scoreboard like we've done for our, our uh, waterfalls. Okay, lay that in to your line. Make sure you're all lined up and press it in. And we're gonna make sure we don't get glue everywhere. Give that a good press. All right, there's our page. So when we turn this, we're not getting hung up. If you can, you can tell. So here we have it, right here. There's your folio, and then this goes to this side, and that's your closure on the right. Okay, so once you have that all put together, we're gonna cut some pattern paper and um, just glue it down and we'll be all set. And if you wanted to, you could go in and put some flat pockets in. Um, or I'm not sure that I'm gonna do that, but it depends on how I feel once I put all of my pattern paper on. So let me get started with putting on my pattern paper. I did do my measurements already, but I don't wanna share that quite yet because I'm not sure if they're exactly right. So let me get that done. And I will put the measurements for all the mats that go on all these pages in the description. And you can see that later. We okay, were back in the folio, the um, pages folio, pages and pages folio is complete. And I just wanna do a quick walkthrough. But before we do that, I just wanna go over the um, what you saw in the beginning of the video was my uh, prototype. And what I did with that was I rounded, you can see that I rounded all, almost all the corners. And if you were to do that, I didn't do that on mine, but because the 80 pound card stock is too thick, I think for my uh, corner rounder to um, put, uh, to cut through two layers of that. So I didn't do that on this one. But if you were gonna do that, you just have to make sure that your pattern paper that you put on, you do all the corners that are rounded on, on, your, um, on your booklet. And see, not all the corners get round. So these in here do not, I don't know how you would do that, but uh, just a note, if you're making this with the rounded corners, uh, make sure you do your pattern paper as well. And we only did rounded corners on the um, closing flap. So let's take a little walk through here, see how this turned out. And here are our flip out pages. So we have plenty of room in here for uh, 
photos, I think there's at least 10 pages in here of big uh, uh, areas to put photos. And I imagine you could, if depending on how you wanted to put them in, you could put uh, four by four, a couple of those, maybe with little note tags and whatnot. But this, these are my babies, Mo and Toby. They're always so cute. And they fit great in here. Uh, I'm, I just wanted to show you because, it, you know, I put the mats behind it because I like that better. Um, then you could put, you know, little tags down here if you wanted to, or, you know, whatever. So that's that's the folio. That's the pages and pages uh, folio. And I, um, one more thing I wanted to note is I did not put, I think I told you this, but I wasn't putting a magnet closure on. So I made this little ribbon. I just put that on and close it up. Only because I have no magnets. I would prefer a magnet on here. Um, I think that's all I wanted to tell you. The corner rounder. Oh, and there's one more. One more key thing is that if you remember how we put these flip out pages in, we um, put this, this page right here, we pulled it back about an eighth of an inch here. So you can see my pattern paper for this one and all of these pages, well, most of them are five and a quarter. Uh, the mats are cut at five and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And this is a bit shy. So you could go and add an eighth of an inch to that particular um, piece. So it would be four pieces because you do front and back. This and this piece would be slightly bigger, but to me, it didn't really make a, enough of a difference for me to worry about changing that measurement because, you know, the photos still look good in here. So if you're one that needs that to be exactly perfect, go ahead and add a little bit of of uh, length or width to that piece. So, and another quick note is that when you see the measurements, you'll see the five and three quarter by eight and a quarter, that those four pieces are the front, the back cover, and inside the front and back cover. So those four go there. All the rest go on all these flip out pages. And then of course, you know, the closure pieces. Okay, I hope, I hope that was a helpful walkthrough and I hope you um, make one of these, you know, comment in the comment section. We all love to hear um, what you have to say and, you know, just give a shout out, say hi. Um, or if you have questions, go ahead and, and uh, post them there and I'll definitely will get back to you. Um, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and share it with your friends. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.